You are Locked On Bulldogs, your daily podcast on the Georgia Bulldogs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Bulldogs podcast. I am Daniel. And I am Clint. Daniel is coming to us on the road. Y'all, this man is road warrior. I'm down in Miami. I'm down in no, no. This is not. This is not my hotel room in Miami. Um, I am recording this uh, from my parents' house, um, which I realize it makes me more relatable to all the Alabama fans in the comments. However, I am not in my parents' basement as I'm recording this. By the way, real quick shout out to Michigan fans. By the way, I see you, I love you, and I got some I got some heaters coming your way, just so y'all know. Because Boy, Michigan let me start fans the podcast. Let me start the podcast by saying this. Michigan fan, live in the brownstone. Point mm-hmm. one. Georgia fans, I'm back. I'm back. Oh no. I'm- oh, he's what? Oh, I'm oh, this back. This is breaking news. I don't Be- even know. Breaking this. news. Bre- I didn't tell Daniel. I told I am back, and here's why I'm back, Daniel. Woo! I'm back because we are the most dominant team in college football 2021 for the entirety of the season, except for one game. One stupid game got us out of our element because we had sick players, we had weird things happen on defense, and Stetson Bennett decided to throw the ball when he shouldn't have, and that's what cost us the game for one Saturday of the entire year. Why in the world was it? Guys, I'm back. So Michigan fan, go live in the brownstone. Mm -hmm. Georgia fan, I'm back. How y'all doing? Michigan fan, I'm coming at you with some heaters today. Georgia fan, I'm coming at you with some heaters because we are well on our way, ladies and gentlemen, to crushing the the less than similar to a badger, but with a little bit more different fur wolverine. That's that's boy, you love to hear it, Clint. You just the people have been waiting. The people love it. Um there was I thought John and I were going to just have to. I, th- I thought that we were going to have to call somebody and send them over to your house or something. We've been well checks are listen, necessary at times. We've been fasting and praying, and it seems like it's paid off. And so, uh, <laughs> welcome of back ashes over here. Welcome back to reality, um, yeah. Michigan. Great season, feel good story. Not in the level, not on the level. So that's that's the podcast right there. All right. We got things we're going to talk about today. Uh, I want to talk about uh, Dan Lanning spoke to the media. Maybe we'll mention that. Todd Munkin spoke to the media. Might mention that. Probably going to talk about the quarterbacks. Uh, But Clint, first of all, Lockdown Bulldogs on the Lockdown Podcast Network. Thanks for being here. Um, uh, It's for fans, by fans. Clint and I are Georgia fans. That's what the podcast is about. Hit us up on Twitter. You see the, the, um, the username down below. Or you can send us an email, LockdownBulldogs at gmail.com. Either way, subscribe to the audio. Tell a friend about the YouTube. Subscribe to the YouTube. All that good stuff. Uh, Clint, you ended the show yesterday. I'm not sure anybody heard this, but I no. believe it was you talking yourself into coming back. I it was. was. You, you were the, it was the makings. You were, it was the, the, the generation of something. Just a little. You said this game reminds you of three games. Mm-hmm. On the on the schedule, and they are the Arkansas game, the Auburn game, and the Kentucky game. Now, Clint, might I remind the listeners that the scores of those games were thirty four to ten, thirty to thirteen, and Clint, how many points did Arkansas score against the University of Georgia? Now, hold on. So you're telling me that of the three games that it reminds you of. There's a 33% chance that I, in fact, was right, and Michigan may not even hang a point in this game. Clint, we're saying 10 to 13 to zero points is about what we're expecting from the University of Michigan, and somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 is what we're expecting from the University of Georgia. I, the more I think about those games, the style of play, and I, listen, I'm not saying Michigan's not better than those teams in certain areas. But when you think about the style of play, when you think about the strengths of this defense versus the strengths of the Michigan offense and vice versa, 
I, I can't help but agree with you. We're both kind of landing in that same spot. Um, this is going to be a 30 to 10 victory for Georgia. I know we're going to get to official predictions tomorrow, and it might change by then what I'm what I'm thinking. But that's I don't know how else to see this game, Clint. I I don't either. So Daniel, this I said Michigan fan in the comments. Uh, I'm coming at you. Which by the way, first of all, um, Michigan fan that doesn't know that rankings change from week to week. Uh, when talking about strength of schedule and when Georgia beats somebody, they usually go down in rankings, which we did to a clip. Uh, we played even into the season rankings, three top 25 teams. Uh, you did as well. So you saying oh. we didn't do research, please, please stop just right there. Okay. Um, How many me, teams coached by Mel Tucker did we play? There it is. Is that, is it any, is it any uh, none. Mel Tucker's? No, we no, didn't coach no. any, didn't no. play against any Mel Tucker coach teams. No. Okay. Uh, look, here's the deal. I'm going to go through, and I'm going to tell you, I know Michigan is out here. The reason I was talking myself out, these games that were that we referenced, that I referenced, the Kentucky game, I'm even going to uh, include in there uh, Missouri, and you're going to say, hold on, Missouri's not on the same caliber. Um, had the SC, the leading rusher in the SEC played for Missouri, Daniel? Hmm. Okay. How about it? How about it? Uh, Tyler Batty, Chris Rodriguez, Brian Robinson uh, Jr., uh, and Tank Bigsby. One, mm -hmm. two, three, and then six. There's Isaiah Spiller and Tyron Davis Price in there as well. Uh, Georgia okay. played all of them, Daniel. And how oh, okay. did, did did they light up the scoreboard against us? Uh, did they oh. did they score every single point possible their team could have, Daniel? No. Again, no. a garbage time last second touchdown for Kentucky got them got them thirteen. Right. And that was the high score of the bunch. Right. So the leading, the Chris Rodriguez, who I still think is better than any all Big Ten running backs that you can name. I, I don't care. Okay, Chris Rodriguez is a stud. Plays for Kentucky. Um, he has as many yards as Haskins does this year. Playing against oh. SEC opponents. Okay. But Corum runs a 4-4, Clint. I'm sure he does. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm positive he I, does. And the I way don't... Michigan fans throw out random stats as if it's an argument is the is one of my favorite things about hosting this podcast so far. There's been many – we've gotten to meet many great people, and yeah. we've gotten to meet a lot of Alabama fans. But the way Michigan fans throw out just random, uh, absolutely meaningless statistics uh, is my favorite thing. Uh, it really is. Um, by the way, of those – plays the explosive plays that Michigan's able to run on their offense. Um, uh -huh. Most in the really nation. Quick. Yeah. Uh, the Haskins nation, I mean. long run is 62. The, the plays over 75 yards isn't the leading rusher for Michigan that y'all coming at me. And Corm can run that 40 dash. I don't, again, I don't care. That's not the thing that concerns me about our safeties and our DBs tracking y'all down. That doesn't concern me. The ability to watch a stutter step and get lost on it. No, that Lewis, me. Lewis seen coming downhill towards a running back. Now we're talking about the thing Lewis Seen does. That's the, the, that he does well. Please that's his let him strong do suit. that. It's a strong okay. suit. So the fact that you are touting a physical offensive line, which by the way, you name the best offensive lines that Georgia's faced uh, time and time again. That's not the thing that concern again, that's not what beats yeah. Georgia. Your offensive line does not beat Georgia. Your wide receivers that are all world top 10 wide receivers in the NFL draft? Okay, sure. You, you got yep. me there, and that's what causes me consternation at night. But Quarterback play? Quarterback yeah. play? Consternation Quarterback play. at night. Wide receivers. These are the things that beat the Georgia defense. And, um, again, that's not what Michigan does. I, I don't expect a ton of points from Michigan. This is not the Alabama game. It is a whole different ball game. All right, we're going to talk. Uh, specifically about the, the Georgia defense. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, Dan Lanning, and then I want to get into the offensive side of the ball for Georgia and talk about the quarterback, um, the quarterbacks, uh, question mark? Question mark? I don't know. Oh, maybe no. we'll, maybe oh, we'll no. get into it in a second. First, I want to let you know uh, about the fine folks over at Bill Bar. Bill Bar is the tastiest protein bar on planet Earth. They come in a wide variety of delicious flavors, and all of them are available at BuiltBar.com. Right now, if you go to BuiltBar.com, you enter the promo code LOCKEDON15. That's the name of the podcast, LOCKEDON15. 
you're going to get 15% off your order of all of the best tasting protein bars on planet Earth. It's the protein bar, if you haven't heard of Built Bar, that tastes like a candy bar. They are keto approved. They're high in protein, high in fiber, low in sugar. They are delicious for on the go, meal replacement, pre workout, post workout, whatever you need them for. BuiltBar.com has it. And again, right now, go to BuiltBar.com. Get one box, two boxes, ten boxes of the del- most delicious protein bar on planet Earth. Enter the promo code Locked On15, and you will get 15% off your first order. That's 15% off the tastiest protein bar on planet Earth at BuiltBar.com. Now, Daniel, you wanted to talk about a few things, just really quick, finishing up from last segment, uh, and then sure. I'll be done with it. Uh, Kenneth Walker, who all y'all are talking about, all world. Um, Lit up yep. Michigan for 197, so vaunted run defense. And you're going to say, well, he's a he's a Heisman kind of guy. Again, sure. Batty of Missouri had just the same stat line as he did. He just plays on a horrible team and wasn't hyped up preseason. Uh, he should have gotten as much run as Kenneth Walker. Okay, so really quick there. Uh, we held Ooh. Missouri to nothing. Kenneth Walker rolled all over y'all uh, and then got shut down by Ohio State. So – but but y'all beat Ohio State. See, the logic breaks down anywhere you slice it, Michigan fan. Georgia fan, we should have hope because, again, this style of play, um, bring it. I beg you. Uh, okay, now I'm done. Gosh. Continue. It feels good to have you back. It feels Clint. so good. It's it feels been, so good. You know, listen, I, I, I look forward to the day that you will carry the podcast while I just mope in we, solitude in the corner. We, Daniel, we, we did it we before. Just alternate. We alternate. We, we, we've we, done this before. We, We'll do it again. I, I promise you this. We will do it again. Yes. Uh, let's talk about this. Dan Lanning, <clears throat> media availability. He's 100% focused on Georgia, all this, blah, blah, blah. They, they This is a business trip. We came down here to play a football sure. game. We're not interested in going to the beach, blah, 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 all that stuff. Let me ask you a big picture question about Dan Lanning because I think this is a national media narrative question that can be – kind of dumb, but can also maybe be fairly relevant. Um, Dan Lanning, obviously splitting time, right? Splitting carries here. There's hard to say exactly what role Will Muschamp and Glenn Schumann are playing in this defense. (laughs) Hard to say what exactly role Dan Lanning is playing in this defense. And so let me just ask you sort of, big picture general as general of a question as I can make it is having Dan Lanning in Miami good or bad for Georgia and and why okay Go ahead. uh it's good and there are two main reasons why it is good okay, okay. one Georgia defense loves Dan Lanning these players love Dan Lanning. There is something beyond just a job in this Georgia team, especially with the backers, especially with the the high profile guys. Rave about Dan Lanning. Rave about Shu as well. Like we're gonna again, we have plenty of time to talk about him all offseason. We're gonna talk about Shu and, and the integral part he plays, and we're so glad to have him. Gosh, it's so sure. good to have Shu. But the players love him. They play for him. Um that, that doesn't concern me at all. Okay, so if you're looking from a, a Georgia-centric approach, right, the players there, that's your deal. The second reason it's good, um, Dan Lanning knows something, Daniel. Oh, okay. what's this? When you walk into a young man's house, maybe in Texas, maybe in Louisiana, maybe in Georgia, and you want to talk about coming and playing for him at Oregon. Way out west. Way away from home, away from everybody that you love, everybody you know. It's a lot easier to do so when you're fiddling with a national championship ring on your hand. Hello. It's a Hello. lot easier to do that. Dan Lanning has every incentive to come into Oregon on the white horse because because fan base is not totally sold on him yet. The the. The previous players have already written a letter saying, hey, we want Oregon football, which, by the way, I don't even know what that means. Joey Harrington, you're the biggest disappointment to ever come Joey. out. Board. Joey oh, Harrington out here talking about. First of the, all, the University of Oregon, this is the face of your program. So that's the face of your program. I'm not 
I'm not I'm not making a comment on that. I'm just simply stating. I'm observing things in evidence. Dan Lanning knows that he brings clout, he brings respectability, he brings a whole lot of mojo. He's able yeah. to do that. So he has every incentive to do so. The players want to play for him. And then I'm going to add a third. If y'all don't think that Kirby Smart is the top DC in Georgia, then you haven't been watching our team. There's a there's a reason we're not concerned about the DC moving on. We weren't concerned when Way For It Michigan fans Mel Tucker moved on. Uh, even though I've heard now I can't confirm or deny this. Maybe you can. I've heard he's okay. a heck of a coach. I've heard he's a heck of a he can out coach. He X's and O's. He's got that down. Boy, oh boy. I've heard Jim Harbaugh better coach than Kirby Smart. Seen it in the comments quite a few times. Um, mm. So what does that make Mel Tucker, I guess? Oof, boy. Um, some sort of a guru or and or insider, I think, Clint. Clint, we're going to talk about the quarterbacks, and so this is just a warning. If you if you want to just turn the pot off, this now is your chance. Now is your chance to turn. If you're tired of – quarterback talk subscribe leave us a comment drop it down below we would love to hear from you tomorrow okay but we're about to talk about the quarterbacks and um it's just we we've gone through too much season to be politically correct anymore you understand that's not that's not where we are i may be back I may be back, but I've been to hell and now I'm back emotionally and I've brought sure. some things with me. So I don't know if that I don't I just I'm trying to be honest. Honest communication in any relationship is important. So that's what this podcast is about. First I want to tell you about the fine folks over at Bet Online. Listen, real bowl games are coming. The college football playoff is coming just a few short days away. If you want to make wagers, on said bowl games, uh, you can do that at betonline.ag. It's the place that Clint and I trust. It is your online sportsbook expert. So go there right now, enter the promo code Locked On, and you're going to get a 50% bonus on your initial deposit. They're going to give you free money with which to bet on the college bowl games, the NFL playoffs, the NBA, the NHL, golf, Hockey, lacrosse, whatever it is, whatever your sport of choice is, betonline.ag has it. They've got all the wagers that you want to make. Props, parlays, over-unders, spreads, money lines, etc. And it can all be found in a, uh, a fast and easy-to-use, user-friendly website over at betonline.ag. Get over there now. Enter that promo code locked on and get a 50% bonus on your initial deposit. BetOnline, your online sportsbook experts. Dan, you got quarterback position, which is intriguing to a lot of people because as we were tracking some. planes flying overhead, NORAD was not used to. It's just a, it was as if we were uh, a poverty program hiring a new coach this offseason. Correct. And we were concerning ourselves with flights from middle of nowhere, Louisiana to Gainesville. Like, is this, is this, uh, is, are these, is there smoke here? Is there. Instead, we were tracking private jets being used to shuttle former five-star current backup quarterbacks off the COVID protocol list and ferry them down to Miami uh, Coral Gables area. Now, Clint, yes. there's plenty there's, – there's no reporting happening on this podcast, first of all. We're not – we're not reporting. We are fans. He's a fan. Sure. I'm a fan. We're talking like fans. But there's some things being said like JT Daniels is getting some first team first team reps in practice. There's some things being said like he was supposed to come up at this date, Thursday or Friday, and instead uh-huh. or Wednesday or Thursday, instead he's coming up on Tuesday. There's there's just some things that are, are interesting. Now obviously Todd Munkin comes out. A press conference and says Stetson Bennett's the starter and he seemed pretty angry about it to be honest with he, you. which he was he was very antagonistic if I could be honest sure. yeah that's great I love that I'm happy with that now first of all it. if what the heck is Todd Munkin gonna say like it, if if Stetson's gonna start the game which I fully expect Stetson Bennett to start the game yes 
what else is Todd Munkin going to say other than Stetson Bennett is going to start the game and he gives us the best chance to win? Are you going to say Stetson Bennett's going to start the game and he doesn't give us the best chance to win? Of course you're not going to say that. Like, all I'm saying to you, Clint, is mm-hmm. is Stetson Bennett going to finish the game? See, this is this is the interesting question. So I'll ask you a, a similar, although the position is different, and I understand that. Who's the starting running back at the University of Georgia, Daniel? Sure. Zamir White. But, Zamir White. Um, who was on the field first in many games this year? James Cook. James Cook. Okay. See, we could play coy with wording and starting and all of that minutia. We can get down. Here's what I know. Todd Munkin likes Stetson Bennett's ability. And what's the one thing he's been talking about his ability time and time again? Daniel, what's the one thing Kirby and he talk about? Oh, them legs. He just he just used them legs. And we said on this podcast before, I've been begging them to put to say, tuck it and run, Stetson. Don't force it down the field. Take the seven to eight yard gain and slide, young man. And I'm happy with it. Honestly, I was happy thrilled with, that. with it. I'm beyond thrilled. Do that. I, I'm not going to fault you. I'm not going to say, how dare you. Now, it seems as though there is smoke. We're talking all across the board. We're talking fa- waiter in Miami who is on the beach looking at snaps of the 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 two hand touch game on the beach. Okay, like this is we're at that DefCom level. But it seems that there are people saying, "Hey, no, there's there's something." He wouldn't have been brought there under such situations, as if there was not an intentional plan in place, Daniel. I will say this. I do think you bring him there no matter what because – Correct. I, far be it from me, us to disparage a college athletes, whatever. But if, if JT Daniels is not there, the backup is Carson Beck, Clint. Oh, no. Oh, and no. I don't – I don't think I have to tell you, if you're still listening to this podcast 22 minutes in, I don't think I have to tell you what that means. Okay? My son my son has uh, knows all the players' names on Georgia. Uh, cannot remember Carson Beck's name. Only remembers him as that quarterback that one time came in and we thought he was going to be good and isn't. That's what he calls Carson Beck. From the mouth of babes uh, comes the truth sometimes. Uh, all right. You bring him down anyway. I don't sure. know that we're going to get into like a two-quarterback rotational system where we have a mobile quarterback and a passing quarterback. Here's what I feel like. And listen, y'all, Kirby Smart haters, no matter what team you cheer for, you might be might be Georgia, might be Alabama, might be Michigan, might be Ohio State, might be whoever. Some other bitter fan base that's watching this because your team's not playing for anything relevant at all. <clears throat> or your team just lost the Birmingham Bowl. Zach, are you listening to the podcast? Hey, hey, Black Beat, reach out, reach out, (laughs) reach out, reach out. We're here. We're here for you. We are here. Um, Okay. If, if I'll, I'll say this, there's the SEC championship game. And now this is me as a fan talking. I have no evidence to back this up. But after that first drive of the third quarter, Clint. Okay. This, by Who the way, got the ball? Go Before ahead. you keep going, guys, I was when I was in my deepest pit. Th- this sort of talk helped me through it. So just listen, listen. Who got the ball to start the second half of the SEC championship game, Club? I, I, I was talking just yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, it's Alabama receives uh-huh. the second half kickoff. That's Georgia right. does not send an offense out onto the field because they don't have the ball. Okay. Alabama then proceeds to go the length of the field and score yep. an absolute dagger touchdown. After at halftime, we had convinced ourselves that we weren't really out of the game. It was only a seven point game, and we could sure. somehow claw our way back. No, a- Alabama goes down, scores an absolute dagger touchdown. I, in my heart of hearts, I, I think Kirby Smart says to himself, this game is over, right? JT has gotten no reps with the first team. Stetson has been the guy all season. There's absolutely no reason for me to send JT Daniels out there onto the field. 
This game is over, and we're moving on. We're on to Cincinnati. We made the playoff anyway. Now, do I know that that's true? No, of course I don't know that that's true. There's nothing to back that up. Here's what I feel confident to say. That's not going to be the case in this game. Mm. Okay? Mm. If things go sideways in this game, I'm going to say it here on the podcast loud for everybody. If things go sideways in this game mm-hmm. with Stetson Bennett, mm-hmm. you will see JT Daniels play in this I'm game. Talking, I'm talking Period. two bad series consecutively. Look for a warm-up. You will see him play. This is a this is a win or go home situation. Literally. And listen, Georgia fan, I don't care what you have tattooed on your upper thigh or wherever you have it. It's really I intimate don't care knowledge. How much money you spend on season tickets. Okay. I don't care how many generations of your family have been Georgia fans. Nobody wants to win a national championship more than Kirby Smart. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants it more than Kirby Smart. It's a winner go home. You do not fly this kid up. You do not give him first team reps in practice. No. I'm not saying there's going to be a rotation. No. If Stetson plays well, you will not see JT, I don't think, in this game. Maybe fourth quarter if the score... If the score is comfortable. Sure. But if things do not go well for Stetson Bennett particularly, you will see JT Daniels in this game. That's that's my Look, quarterback take. If Stetson is playing well, uh, I'm just going to do two comparisons. JT doesn't play well. You know at a moment's notice he could turn the thing around. Like he's just one throw away from being on rhythm and on time. Stetson doesn't play well. We've seen that script. When he's not playing well, right. it doesn't the ship does not write mid game for Stetson, guys. It it doesn't. So he comes out there and if he's on pace and he's on time and he's using his legs, he's running, he's scrambling, he's hitting Brock, he's hitting the outs, he's doing all the things that's necessary, we're gonna be just just fine. If he and gets listen, off for the record, sorry, I'm gonna let you finish. For the record, that's my prediction of what's what will happen in this game. Uh, same here. Same here. He gets off kilter and he has a bad couple of drives and he throws a pick on one of the drives and he does he misses a wide open uh, deep ball to Lad McConkey and he he doesn't throw it out of bounds he takes a sack you know trying to scramble trying to make too much that's bad Stetson and that doesn't get corrected mid game guys it never has and guess what it never will that's when I yeah. think yeah there's a high likelihood that we will either change up the offensive philosophy totality and go run exclusively or bring in JT for that change and write the ship. Uh, couldn't agree more. This is the kind of, and, and by the way, again, we're not reporting and this isn't fan speak as hopeful. That's, that's us knowing Kirby, knowing what he wants to win and, and be, speaking Kirbyese guys, like yeah. there's something to this. Kirby doesn't do this often. Okay. Something's happening. We'll see. We'll we see. shall see. All right. We'll be back tomorrow. And we will be back. There'll be an episode on Friday morning to get you ready for the game. Ooh. But we'll be back tomorrow. Ooh. Official predictions. Clint and I are both going to give a score. We're going to give an official prediction on the over-under, on mm-hmm. the spread. We're going to give to the number score predictions of how we expect this game to go. And we'll probably talk just a little bit about the Alabama-Cincinnati game as well and see sure. if we could give a prediction on that. Uh, so join us tomorrow, uh, Michigan fans. It's been fun having you for the next two days. You will not be back on Monday, so we will see. We'll, we'll see you tomorrow, and we'll see you on Friday. And then uh, bon on Monday, we are going to be making a lot of fun of you, but you will never hear it. So it's fine. It's not I a real. I won't be talking a, about Jawan Howard. So no, no, need to listen. you won't. No, and that will be the only sports figure that matters to you on Monday. So uh, thanks for being here. Thanks for listening. And we will see you guys 